The Millennium Items or Senen Itemu are items that were created a really long time ago and every time there was something bad going on, the Millennium Items were involved somehow. The sad part is that hardly anyone knows the story of the Millennium Items. So today I'm gonna teach you as much as I can about the 7 items and even more. First let's talk about something in general. The power of the Millennium Items is old, really, really old. Attempts uncle Agnadin, the twin brother of the pharaoh Agnim Cannon, created them with the help of the Millennium Spellbook. But this book was created by Zorg the Necrophile himself a long time ago, so that someday someone could create the Millennium items with it and he could be set free using them. Dieses Buch der Millenniums Zaubersprüche enthielt den Schlüssel zur Macht, den nur die ägyptischen Götter kannten. And the way the Millennium Spellbook was used to create the Millennium Item seems really familiar to me, because Atom's uncle had to sacrifice a whole village, 99 people in 7 days, full metal alchemist style and melt their blood, flesh and bones together with gold to create the Millennium Items. After that all 7 items were sealed in the Millennium Stone, which was later used by Bakura to summon Zork. Also, Bakura was the only one who survived the massacre and was a little mad because of it. <laughs> Honestly, I would be pissed for 5000 years too, locking children in playing cards and suffering from voice cracks my whole life. The Millennium Eye The Millennium Eye is probably one of the more well known Millennium items. Pegasus flexed with this eye whenever he could. 5000 years ago, Atom's uncle sacrificed his left eye to have it implanted. His plan was to use the eye to make his son set to the pharaoh, which actually worked. So don't let anyone ever tell you that going for your dreams is stupid, even though he became ugly as fuck. <laughs> The eye has the ability to start shadow games and banish souls, as Pegasus did with Yugi's grandfather, Mokuba and Kaiba. Sie ist nicht ohne Grund leer, weißt du? Falls ich gewinne, fordere ich deine Seele. Und zwar für immer. Additionally, Pegasus was able to read his opponent's thoughts until Yugi used the power of friendship to give him the side eye. The Millennium Key. The Millennium Key is one of the Millennium items that not much is known about. It's the only item that doesn't bear the eye of Anubis and has the shape of an Ankh, the Egyptian symbol for life. Before Shadi got the Millennium Key, Yugi's grandpa's ancestor, Shimon, was the keeper and bearer of the Millennium items. He used that key to seal Exodia in 5 stone tablets and then release them during the fight against Zork. Zeig dich, du große Beschützerin von Ägypten! Exodia! He could control Exodia, but every injury Exodia suffered, Shimon felt it and eventually died from it or went to the Shadow Realm. Or maybe he just gives up his shinobi way. The main ability of the Millennium Key is to open the door to a person's soul and enter the soul room. This room looks different for each person and contains items that match the personality. Here is a room of the Unschuld, free from jeder Bosheit. Ich spüre the Unschuld einer Seele, die unmöglich dem Dieb eines Millenniums Auges gehören kann. If you decorate the room with someone from Helping Hands, you can influence and manipulate the person. Just like with Eisen from Bleach, you can only break the spell by touching the Millennium Key. Also, the user can just destroy the whole personality. So yeah, pretty OP. Bonus Pyramid of Light Quick pit stop, the Millennium Shield. Just kidding, let's talk about the Pyramid of Light. Surprisingly, the Pyramid of Light appears in the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie Pyramid of Light and is introduced as the lost 8th millennium item. According to the movie, it was an unsuccessful attempt by Agnadin to create a millennium puzzle for his son Seto, so that he wouldn't be sad about Atom not letting him play with his. Agnadin created the Pyramid of Light with the help of the sorcerer Anubis, who was defeated by Atom and hid inside the Pyramid of Light to seek revenge someday. <laughs> Of course, it's not surprising that he was defeated again with the power of friendship by Yugi and his friends.
By the way, the Pyramid of Light doesn't have any special abilities other than gathering power for Anubis Resurrection and it only activates when the trap card Pyramid of Light is activated. So it's pretty much useless. The Millennium Rod when you hear Millennium Rod, most people probably think of Marek and rightfully so, because the Marek arc was pretty much the coolest arc in Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Priest Seto originally had the rod, but he didn't do much with it other than using it as a walking stick. When Yami Marek came to life, he immediately used the blade of the rod to murder his own father. In the manga, he peeled the skin off his back. In the Japanese anime, he stabbed him and in the translation, he banished him into the Shadow Realm. So yeah, take your pick. The main ability of the Millennium Rod is to hypnotize and control people. The person can then also be used as a listening device through telepathy as everything seen or heard is transmitted through the rod. Malik was even able to transfer control of a person to another person who wasn't even holding the Millennium Rod. Plus, it makes for a great sleeping aid. The Millennium Ring the Millennium Ring was originally owned by Mahat, the original Dark Magician, 5000 years ago and by Bakura today, even though Marek briefly took it from him. Bakura got it back because Rex Raptor and Weevil Underwood had stolen the ring by accident. Hey, Augenblick mal! Oh. Das sind nicht die ägyptischen Götterkarten! <laughs> the true power of the ring can be seen in the movie Dark Side of Dimensions. There it went completely berserk. It illuminated Manny's mind, it transformed Aigami into his final form, Dark Diva, and then it transformed the quantum cube into a huge die which absorbed the whole world and spread evil. Diva? Oh, hat schon besser ausgesehen. In Yu-Gi-Oh! Capsule Monsters, one of the ring owners was Alexander the Great. He first used the ring's powers to slap everyone standing in his way, but then his personality split and he turned evil. Oh, and if you're not strong enough to control the ring, it stabs you, burns your soul and you die. So yeah, risks and side effects. The fine print. The Millennium Ring's main abilities are to guide its owner like a compass to what he wants. Plötzlich, aus heiterem Himmel leuchtete mein Ring auf und zeigte direkt auf dein and to trap other people's souls inside itself or in objects. <laughs> the Quantum Cube The Quantum Cube is like a new Millennium item from the Dark Side of Dimensions movie. The cube originally belonged to our favorite bald guy Shadi, but then it was passed on to Aigami after he used it to kill a man. You know, the evidence had to disappear somehow. And according to Seda, the cube is the 8th millennium item. Yeah, she just decided that. The really cool thing about the cube is its ability to not only move its owner and others around, but even teleport them to other dimensions. Which Kaiba could block with his UHD dual disc. That's how Aigami tried to get rid of Bakura and Joey, but he failed, of course. Oh, and the thing can transform into a dual disc too. Du sagtest, Technik hat Grenzen? Falsch. Es gibt keine Grenzen, wenn man so genial ist wie Shadow Kaiba. In the movie, the Quantum Cube merged with the Millennium Ring to destroy the whole world and was eventually used by Kaiba to travel 5000 years into the past and face off against Atom personally. The Millennium Puzzle. Let's talk about the king of millennium items, the Millennium Puzzle. When Pharaoh Agnem Cannon learned that the items were created by killing 99 people, he decided to sacrifice his own life and pass the puzzle to Atom. Shortly after, Bakura stole it to summon Zork. There wasn't even a moment of peace for 5 minutes. Atom then sacrificed his own life to trap his soul and Zorks in the Millennium Puzzle, where he was pretty smart about it. He included his own name in the magic spell and then resets his mind into factory settings so the spell couldn't be undone. Kann. Ich bin der Sohn von König Agnam Kanon und mein Name ist Atem. The puzzle has the ability to grant one wish to the person who solves it and to help him win in games. Yugi is able to share his body with the pharaoh and switch places when things get tough. 
Yami is then able to do all sorts of things with the puzzle. Most people probably know about the mind crush he used to defeat Kaiba after their duel, but it can also summon illusions and manipulate others. The puzzle is so powerful that it can block the power of other millennium items and even the seal of Oracalcus. Also dann, im Namen des Pharao, erwacht aus eurem ewigen Schlaf! So, und jetzt rufe ich die drei großen Götter Ägyptens! The Millennium Necklace The Millennium Necklace was once owned by an unnamed priestess under Agnum Canum and later by Isis, until it finally belonged to Ishizu. Ishizu can use the necklace to show Kaiba the past and even see into the future. However, her skill is not that great as seen when she predicted that Kaiba would lose the duel against her, even though he just checked like sacrificed obelisk and won. Wenn du dich etwas mehr mit dem Duell und weniger mit der Zukunft beschäftigen würdest, hättest du wenigstens eine Chance, nicht zu verlieren. She then realized that she wasn't that good and gave the necklace to Yugi as a gift. In addition to its time traveling ability, the necklace can also protect the wearer from dark magic. The Millennium Scale there's unfortunately not much to know about the Millennium Scale's abilities. It's used to weigh a person's sins against the Feather of Maat. If the person being questioned lies or shows their true evil self, the sight opposite the Feather tilts downwards as if the sins are pulling it down. If that sight touches the ground, the person's soul is eaten by Emmet. Even a damn scale can't be harmless in Yu-Gi-Oh! Additionally, the scale has the power of fusion with the old car monsters. 